Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about heavy and light cycles for kettlebell training. This is a super nerdy topic, but it is a very, very good topic. Understanding heavy and light cycles in your own personal program design will allow you to get more athletic development in the least amount of time. I am a trainer and I always treat training like an engineering equation. We are always trying to get the best overall outcome for the least amount of time, for the least amount of money in the simplest possible way. We could get fancier with that, but that's the overall philosophy. Kettlebell training helps people meet that goal. Kettlebells are generally inexpensive compared to other pieces of equipment like treadmills or barbells or squat racks. They are very portable and they can be done in a small space. So you don't need specialized areas to do them in. You can get away with a small amount of equipment. That equipment takes up a very small footprint, say 10 by 10 inside your house, flat or apartment, whatever you guys call it. And then understanding the idea of alternating heavy and light days allows people to get more athletic development without getting hurt. If we don't get hurt, then we can do more training than we get closer to our goals. Now that we've laid all that out, we're answering some specific questions about this idea. We've talked about this in a lot of previous videos. This is called our Nerd Math series of training. And I don't know how many videos we've made on this topic, but we've made a lot. We're gonna to try to answer a couple of separate questions today. One of the questions that we had was, what percentage difference do you need between a heavy and light day? Let's lay out a quick history of what the idea of heavy and light comes from. The idea of heavy and light training comes from barbell training. In barbell training, you can test your one rep max because you can micro load a barbell. You can take a 350 pound barbell and you can make it 351 pounds. So you can very precisely measure your one rep maximum and then you can do a heavy light cycle. A heavy cycle generally could be say 80% of your one rep maximum and you could then train three sets of three of that. Your light cycle could be 60% of your one rep maximum and then you could do say five sets of five. To get better at that you could then add sets to those things and make the heavy four sets of three and then five sets of three and then six sets of three and then your light cycle which started at five sets of five could become six sets of five could become seven sets of five could become eight sets of five and you would add volume at your heavy weight, 80% of your one rep max, and you would add volume at your light weight, 60% of your one rep max. And then that would allow you to train more. This idea is pretty simple. If you do your one rep max or you max out all the time, then you get really tired. And then that detracts from your overall quality of life. If you're always maxing out, then you need a lot more time to recover. By doing a heavy light cycle, you can progress and work on improving your lifts without killing yourself, so much so that you can't function. General idea. This idea can be applied to all kinds of things. I mean, you could apply it to script writing if you wanted to. Heavy work days, light work days, but still doing some work each day, but learning to cycle your work capacity in order to improve your overall performance in whatever it is. With kettlebells, this is an interesting idea. Because kettlebells don't micro load for the most part the same way barbells do. Barbells, you can change the weight very precisely in fractions of a pound, which allows you to get down to, you know, a half a percent change here or there. You can adjust your weight very precisely. With kettlebells, you tend to have fixed weights. Not always, but usually. Let's use the classic weights of kettlebells as an example. 16 kilograms, 24 kilograms, and 32 kilograms. The general idea in heavy light training with kettlebells is your heavy day should have a lower overall work capacity than your light day. Light day, you do more work. Heavy day, you do less work. This is an idea which allows us to cycle through and continue to get better over time without dying. We made a little rough graph here. If you were to just try to increase your work capacity every day, you would be moving up on a straight line. That tends not to work for most people because humans adapt at different rates and they adapt to different things. Going straight up tends not to work in lifting or really in anything. What we need is a variance of our work capacity so that our body has time to adapt. If we tried to go straight up, then we would need more rest time. We would get less overall reps. That would contribute less to our overall development of skill. 
Yeah, I think I said that right. What we would like is our light day to have a specific work capacity and our heavy day to be lower than that. Light day, we added, say, a set. Our overall work capacity went up. And then our heavy day, same thing. We could add a set and move our work capacity up. The idea of this is that we are moving our work capacity up in a wave. This allows us a bit more time to recover. Not every day is the hardest day you've ever done. So you tend to get better faster. You get less injuries. If you get less injuries, you can spend more time training. You get better at what you want to do. This is specific to each individual lift, how this works. We can make a million videos on this idea. If anybody wants to watch them, I have no idea if people are this nerdy or not. Let's start this idea by talking about Turkish get-ups. Let's say we were using a 16 kilogram kettlebell. We did 10 sets of one rep on each side. So you do one left, one right, one left, one right. You did 10 sets on each side, a total of 20 reps. We could figure out our work capacity. Work capacity is the weight, 16K times the number of sets, 10 sets, times the number of reps, one rep on each side. 16 times one plus one is two, gives us 32 times 10 gives us 320 kilograms moved for that lift in this specific way. If we were to do Turkish get up, say twice a week, which is a pretty good idea, then we would alternate that light day with a heavier day. Let's use both the 24 and the 32 as an example. If we were going to do a 24, then we would want to have a lower work capacity than the light day. So, Old engineering idea, you can just assume numbers, calculate them out and see which one works. 24 kilogram kettlebell times seven sets times two is 336 total kilograms. That is greater than 320. So we were going to go down one whole number. We can't go down fractions of a rep. We need to do one whole rep for it to count. So we have 24K times six sets times one on each side. And that gives us 288. If our light day was 16 times 10 times one left, one right, we got 320 kilograms. Our heavy day could be 24K times six sets times left times right would give us 288. That would allow us to do more work on this day and less work on this day and it would work out really, really well. Let's push that example a little further and let's push it into our 32K, 16K, 320 kilograms total. 32 kilograms, easy place to start. 16 is half of 32, so let's assume that our number of sets needs to be half. So 16 times five times one and one gives us 320. It's exactly the same. We could do that we would prefer to have it be lighter. So let's go down one whole number because that's one whole rep. 32 times two is 64 times four is 256. So our heavy day would have a lower overall work capacity than the light day. People have asked if you could put this into a specific percentage, say 10 to 20%. What percent would you like between the heavy and the light day difference? There is a problem with that. Whole numbers. You can't make the 16K kettlebell lighter. You can't make the 24 kilogram kettlebell lighter and you can't make the 32 kilogram lighter or heavier. They're fixed weights, unlike barbells, which are heavily adjustable weights and micro loadable. So the percent doesn't work out perfectly. If we wanna figure out our percent, then we would take 320 over 288 and we would do 320 over 256. 320 over 288 would give us 1.11. That would be an 11% change. 320 over 256 gives us 1.25, gives us a 25% change. So there can't be a specific perfect thing because we have whole numbers. So the way that we do this is just by assuming this, specifically for Turkish getups. Take your light day, your light day sets your work capacity. The next time you did your light day, you could do say 16 by 11 sets of one and one. And you would get, you would have 320 plus 32 equals 352. That's a messy 352, but it's there. And then you would figure out what your next one would be, right? So your next one would, could be seven because that's 336. 336 is less than 352. It would work out. And over here, you could do that set of five and you'd have 320 is less than 352. 
So this is specific to each individual lift, which is super annoying, but that is specifically because kettlebells tend to be whole numbers. You can't microload them. There are some kettlebells that can microload, but the idea still doesn't change. You have a very hard time getting any specific difference like that. Most people also don't have adjustable kettlebells, that new innovation that makes kettlebelling so much cooler. Most people in the world have access to the fixed weight kettlebells because that's what gyms have had for the last 10 years. That's what's commonly available at sports stores. So this idea is very important to understand. This is a pretty nerdy video. I know what we are doing is we figure out our work capacity for each individual lift. And then our heavy day needs to have a lower total overall work capacity than that day. We add volume to these because that's how we get better with fixed weight over time. And then we do it again. Eventually we just work our way up. The easiest way to think about this is a list. You would, start with a light weight and you would do say four to five workouts and get that work capacity ramped up. And then you would figure out whichever other weight you have, you would figure out your starting point, your total number of sets based on that work capacity. You are gonna have to do math. I'm sorry, there's no way around it if you wanna understand this topic. Most people probably aren't that interested in this, but if you're a trainer or you're actually trying to change your life, then you know you need to know this stuff this stuff is important always think about that what weights do you have determines how all of this math works out